Okay, folks, listen, I'm back at it again with another budget-friendly meal, right? Today, we're doing a beef ramen. Listen, these type of meals right here, they're inexpensive and they feed six to eight people. You cannot beat that, right? So if you guys look, you can see we got a few ingredients right here, but I'm gonna tell you what's gonna be the star. And that'll be this right here. And the reason I call it the star is because I'm using 93.7. You know what? I don't wanna have all of the, I usually do 90.10. And if you really ask me if I can really find it, I like to do 80.20. You know what I mean? If you're doing 80-20, it's gonna leave a lot of grease and everything inside your crock pot. Listen, I'm not finna over talk it. We finna get right into this. All right, so listen, we got some heat in our cast iron, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of infused olive oil to it. Then we're gonna add, again, I'm letting you guys know this right here is 93.7. That's 93% beef, 7% fat content. Now, while we browning that, I've been asking you guys to get yourself one of these because listen, everybody doesn't have a cast iron. If you don't, I'd suggest you save up some. You can get them on Amazon. They're fairly, fairly cheap. You can get the Lodge brand, which is a great brand, right? But when you get yourself one of these meat masters like this, look, if you're using anything other than cast iron, it might have a coating on it. And if it does, this right here, this plastic material or neoprene uh, material right here will not scratch up and you won't have to ingest none of that non-stick stuff, right? Now look, I'm gonna be using my B, right? This is for like the heavier meats, but this right here goes great with this recipe here. Now you notice, like when you guys go to my website, which is smoking and grilling with AB.com, right? You're gonna see that I don't, on the recipe, I usually don't put no seasoning on there. That's probably new to you guys, because we want to marry all of these flavors together to make it a little bit more on the authentic side, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this fire off, because this is done. Because you know, don't, don't forget, we're gonna be cooking this in the slow cooker, right? So I just didn't want to see no pink. Give it a little swirl, get some of these uh, seasoning to get on here. But I want you guys to trust me, don't put no seasoning in there, or do, you know what I mean? But if you want it to be a little bit more, you know, authentic, no seasoning, just trust the marriage. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead, let's go ahead and peel this carrot. Now you guys know how to peel. I'm not gonna bore you guys. Let me just get this peeled and I'm gonna show you. We gonna cut this up. Okay, so once we got it peeled, right? This is what we getting ready to do. I'm gonna go ahead and take it, cut it here and I'll cut it here. Just really cut it in the thirds, right? So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna cut a little, little flat spot out in this. The reason I'm doing that, because I want it to be able to stay this way while I cut it, right? So I'm gonna make something out of that too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and just cut these down like this, right? You guys got it? And now we just finna, if you can imagine a, a matchstick, look at this. And this is what you want. Okay, so now we're gonna work with these scallions, right? I'm gonna be using the green part, so I'm gonna cut them here. Give you guys a little pro tip. If you guys got a mason jar, if you just put some fresh water in there, set this in the inside, and set this outside, you know what I mean? Uh, you gonna grow all new tops. To be honest with you, once you have enough of these, you should never have to have, ever have to buy them again. Then you can like plant them outside, and then you got a, a lifetime of these. All right, so look, we're just gonna do it like a little rough, a little rough chop. That's enough right there, right? Now, I brought this over here because I want to show you guys something, right? So we just cut these, you know what I mean? Just like this, right? To go along with the diced, right? So we take this, and now we just put this in here like that. And again, folks, just to give a little recap, yeah, you did hear me right. To do it the right way, don't add any seasoning to it. I just do this right now because I'm just, doing me, you know what I mean? But I'm gonna give it to you. Don't forget, it's on my website, smoking and grilling with AB.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Go ahead, print it out, and make this. You guys should have everything inside of your, uh, you should have everything inside of your pantry or your cupboards. Let me make room so you guys can see. I mean, you can see it visually in your brain, right? I just pushed all of the ground beef up against the one side, right? Listen, there is no certain way to do this or nothing like that. Let me move this out the way. Let me bring this a little closer to myself. All right, and now I'm gonna do this where it look pretty. You don't have to do that, right? You can just sit it all in here. Just, cause listen, we gotta mix it anyway, but I'm gonna give you a visual. Next, I'm getting ready to bring my green onion, scallion, right? Then I'm getting ready to put in my matchsticks out of my carrots. And then last but not least, I'm gonna put my little slivers of red bell pepper 
in here like that. Now check it out. Now you want to get yourself like a, a bowl, right? Because we're going to do a little mixing. We want to mix everything right here, right? So I'm going to start right here. I need to have two cups. Let me shake this up. I need to have two cups of chicken broth or stock. All right, so we'll add that here. And now I want to have a half a cup of soy. Look right here, that's that low sodium soy. You guys can use whatever you would like, but I like to cut back wherever I can, right? So we find a half a cup. So now we pour that inside of here, right? Now for the best part of the whole thing for me is I get to mess with this. I don't know why it does that, but look, you want to talk about having a big garden clove? Look at this. I almost don't want to fit, but we get it in there. All right, take it. So all we got to do is get it started. I mean, it's so big though. There we go. See that? Now, I'm going to bring it like this so you guys can see. If you ain't never really seen how these work, right? So, got that. Now, I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah. I don't know how my grandmama had me mincing all this time, but I'm going to put it right here like that. And I use the back of my blade, right? And now we just want to add two tablespoons of brown sugar, right? Now I know the proper way is to pack this down for all of us bakers out there. You know what I mean? That's it. Actually, if I wanted to, I could take a back of my knife and go across this, but this is good. So we want to add just two tablespoons, right? Now we're going to whisk everything together. All right, so once you got it all mixed, Come on in here now i'm just gonna go ahead and just pour this in here just like that all right and that right there is what you should have now being honest with you listen this should only take you about 10 to 12 minutes to go ahead and make it even from pulling all, all your ingredients out of your refrigerator you know what i mean and uh, just getting everything going that's all you need now remember all that hard work i did pushing everything aside so you guys can see it then we just mix it up all right oh yeah this is it now, we keep our ramen out. We don't want to put that in there right now. That's why you guys haven't seen it, right? That's going to come into play in, you know, in just a minute. You know what I mean? But we're going to need a little time. Once you got it all mixed up, right? Next thing I'm going to do is put this top on here and we finna set it. Now, it's going to go like this. If I do it on low, I can go anywhere between four to eight hours. And then, you know, you just double that time. You reduce it by two, right? So you can go anywhere from two to four hours on high. So if you look at my timer right there, look, we got about 30 more minutes left to uh, work with, right? So now it's time to add our ramen noodles, right? Now when you guys buy these, look, they're gonna have like these little packages on the inside to say, to make it flavored, like chicken flavor, you know, all of that, right? So I'm gonna open this up, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the content inside of here. Oops, I dropped my ramen packet. I'll save this later for a spread, for those of y'all that know about that. All right, so put that there. Now I'm gonna open up another one. And we'll put this in there like that. All right, I'm gonna take this out and I wanna get all of the contents in there. All right, now you wanna take you know, your spoon and you wanna make sure that everything is like completely soaked because we wanna make it cooked, right? We wanna have it cooked to ramen. So, just do your best to work with it. You shouldn't need no more, uh, you shouldn't need no more chicken broth or nothing like that, but you just wanna make sure this is completely submerged. So I'm gonna work with this until I can get it in here. And then once I get it down at the bottom, I'm gonna put this lid back on there and I'm gonna let it continue to cook for the last 30 minutes. Okay, folks, look, it's been 30 minutes, so let's take a look at it right here. Just what comes up off of that is fire, folks. Now I changed, obviously, you know, I changed from my squares to this right here so I can get a good stir, right? But you see that right there? Mm, mm, mm. All right, so if you guys come in here, you see it all mixed up, look at it right there. This is what you wanna have. Look, still got a little bit of the liquid. Now you guys can add a little bit of, you know, chicken broth or chicken stock to it after it's cooked, you know what I mean? If you wanted to have it more like soupy. But if you ask me, this is it right here. So let me go ahead and put some of this in a bowl. You know what I mean? And I'll take, make it a star real quick, taking a picture, and then let's eat it, folks.
Okay, folks, look, after doing everything I needed to do with it, I want you guys to pay attention to it. Look at that, right? I put sesame seeds on top. I didn't toast them. I just used, you know, the regular sesame seeds, right? Which would be, you know, like right here. And we just put that on the top. Just, it's more of a garnish. That's exactly what it is. Then you need to put a little bit of green onion top, the green part on there, right? So I'm not gonna fake around and move these and try to act like I can use these uh, chopsticks. I can hear y'all now down in the comment section below telling me, hey, you gotta do them like this. I just, you know what I need to do? I need to practice. But one thing I can tell you is I can get down with this fork. Now, if you ain't never had this, mm, this is good right here, folks. Check it out. This right here puts you back in your chair. If you got one of them little lounge chairs, you know what I mean? Uh, this hot, it's nice, and those of you guys that love that ramen, this is the only way I eat ramen. I don't do it no other way, folks. You know what I mean? Just beef ramen. Now, don't forget, the full printable recipe is on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com. That's W-I-T-A-B.com. This and many, many more recipes that you guys can, you know, print. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell everybody out here. There's a channel out here to simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. I'm finna pour myself some Kool-Aid, folks, and I'm out. Peace.